we're fired up that you guys decided to hang out with us. You can be seated today. Can we also welcome our Katy campus in the house? Also, literally, people from all over the world watching online right now as well. Can you give them a hand as well? Come on, Hope City. All over the world, country, literally thousands of people watch every single week. We have not had the privilege of meeting just yet. Uh, my name is Pastor Daniel Gross. I serve as the teaching pastor here at Hope City and uh, fired up to be a part of what God is doing here. How many guys have enjoyed the do-over or do-over series the past two weeks with Pastor Jeremy? Absolutely been amazing. What a great way to start 2021 off. And I wanna honor our pastors. I always do this because I believe if honor's in you, it comes out of you. Uh, can we honor our pastors right now? Pastor Jeremy and Jennifer Foster for saying yes to the call of God. Pastor Jeremy's getting a breath so we can come back strong. Y'all say next weekend. Now say it with boldness. Say next weekend. Y'all, we're gonna party. We're having our anniversary week and we're celebrating six years. Come on, some, thank you for your smatter. Like just kinda, now come on, shout if God's done something big in your life. Yeah. We're celebrating six years next weekend. Pastor Jeremy's gonna be back bringing the word and we're gonna have a party. So be in the building, be a bringer. If you can't, then make sure you tune in online. Let's hang out, it's gonna be incredible. Tomorrow is a super important day. We did a shout out in the moment of worship. Tomorrow's a super important day as we celebrate the legacy and the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. I think a lot of times we get caught up in just the day off or you know, I'm, I'm gonna fire up some brisket or something. But the truth is we're honoring a man who had a tenacity and a drive that did not quit. Uh, 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 words and quotes and declarations that continue to ring in our ears today that I have a dream and the dream continues on today. And there's two quotes specifically that I love that Dr. King said. The first one is, the time is always right to do what is right. Amen. That's powerful, let that sink in. The time is always right to do what is right. My favorite is, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Come on right now, can we honor the life and legacy of Dr. King? Y'all, something that happened yesterday that I am absolutely fired up about. We had our Freedom Conference yesterday. How many of y'all were a part of it? 470 people showed up, got set free and radically changed. And then, y'all, in the middle of COVID, 45 people got water baptized. Come on, what a great day. Celebrating restoration, so many people restored. There was an incredible testimony at the very end of our worship time and our flow time. We just began to pray and we said, listen, if you need healing, we believe that God still heals. We believe that God still delivers. How many of y'all believe that God is not the God of the I was, but the God of the I am? Like he still heals, he's still restoring, he's still delivering. And afterwards, this girl named Brittany said, I need to tell you a story, I need to tell you a testimony. And she began to tell me her story. And she said, when you guys were flowing in worship and you began to declare that God was healing, she said, you called out three very specific things that I literally have been dealing with physically. All the pain has left. I felt God touch my life. Come on, somebody, that's what God still does. He still restores. I want everybody to do this. Come on, shake it off. If you're at home right now, shake it off. Some of y'all are a little quiet. This feels like a Methodist church. Y'all a little bit? It's hard. I'm gonna be pushing hard. I'm gonna be passionate. Y'all gotta get, don't judge my passion until you know my past or the five shots of premium espresso that I had. Amen. So we're in our do-over series, and uh, I wanna kick this off with a little bit of fun, if you don't mind, uh, and look at some pictures of people that maybe needed a do-over. Uh, I remember uh, when my littlest was little, uh, I had this thought, and this isn't my kid in just a moment, but I had this thought, I was like, babe, I wanna like shave some cool designs in the back of his head, and she's like, you stay away from my son. I'm like, I thought he was our son. She's like, if you're talking like that, he's my son. Uh, so I, you know, when somebody's like, I wanna do the Jordan logo, but I don't wanna pay a lot of money, so this is, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, cl it's close. Uh, or like, let's do family pictures on the beach. Let's do family pictures, I'm sure it won't go wrong. Okay, all right. This kid's having a blast. Bless that dear brother. And then where's all the beauticians at? Where's all the beauticians in the room? We have some, okay, so like this is actually more difficult to do. Okay. So some of the guys are like, I don't see the problem. That's bad. That's a lot of bizarre layers. And then I call this next one the ring of destiny. I, whoa, okay. I think, I might try that. Like, don't threaten me with a good time. I might do that. And then this next one, I don't, I don't necessarily know if this is a lot. I think this is, this isn't a do-over. This is like, we want to look a lot like our Labradoodle. There's no do-over involved in this. And the media said they had another special picture that they wanted. Oh, come on. 
That's ridiculous. This is that. This is like the dude. Okay, moving on. All right, this is totally off my notes, but some pastor friend, Pastor Jeremy and I have a mutual pastor friend, and he was talking about like a major do over that they needed. He said we had this guy on our staff who's amazing. He's a little older, so he doesn't fully understand text terminology like BRB, be right back, uh, SMA, shake my head. He said, LOL, he thought meant lots of love. Now, if I just said that and you were like, that's not what it means, it's not. Hand your phone to a 12-year-old and let him help you. Uh, it, it means laugh out loud. We know, okay, well, he thought LOL meant lots of love, and so they hired him to be the care pastor to take care of people that were going through a lot of trauma and situations. So a lady emailed the church and said, I'm super devastated. Um, things are falling apart in, in my marriage. Can I get some help from the church? And he said, absolutely, we're praying for you, LOL. <laughs> we're praying for you, <laughs> LOL. And then this girl called the church and she said, my grandma just passed away and she was my best friend and I, I love her. And he said, I understand. I'm gonna send you some information about what we can do. And he said, listen, we're here for you. No matter what you need, we've got your back, LOL. <laughs> After a series of about six months, the pastor said he had sent over 100 LOL emails. So they needed a major do-over. So let's just clear this up now. LOL does not mean lots of love. Look at the person next to you and say, come on, we need a do-over. <laughs> Week one, we talked about getting past your past, and listen, I wanna encourage you, go back, be a learner, go back, watch the past two weeks, take down notes, everything's archived, go to YouTube, Hope City, you can check it out, go to our website, you can check it out, take down notes, getting past your past was week number one. Pastor Jeremy unpacked last week about continuing to move forward towards your future, and today, I wanna talk about growing in the midst of the do-over, because the do-over is an incredible opportunity to grow. It's an incredible opportunity to just get better. It's an incredible opportunity to get closer to who you're called to be. I think a lot of times when we think about do-over, it's like, ah, I messed up again. I failed again. I, I, I need a do-over. I, I, I totally flopped on that. I, I totally made a mess of that. Or someone made a mess of me. I need a do-over. And here's what I want you to grab at the very top of this sermon today is the do-over is not just about doing it over. It's about getting better. If you're gonna go through it, then we need to choose to grow through it. Because it's really important that we don't get stuck in a pattern of consistently doing do-overs. We had a pastor, uh, Pastor Levi Lesko, uh, preach, pastors an amazing church called Fresh Star. We have one person that loves Pastor Levi. He's like, woo! Um, he was here, preached a brilliant message, but he said something that was really, really powerful. He said, listen, there's more than enough grace, more than enough mercy, more than enough forgiveness every single time you mess up. And he said, you want me to really blow your mind? God not only has your, your back because of your past, things you made mistakes in now and even future, but he said, here's the reality. He will always forgive, but you constantly wanna live in that cycle where you're going back to God like, hey God, I got messy last night again, a little ratchet dancing in the club. <laughs> I repent, I'm at church, I'm gonna put some money in the offering. Or do we break that pattern and when we get the do-over, we actually get better and grow through it so that we can truly live in the blessing that God has asked us to walk in. We have to have this understanding. Okay, I need to do better. Maybe I did something that I knew from the Holy Spirit he was asking me to stop. Y'all ever had those Holy Spirit nudges? Some call it intuition. Some call it a gut feeling. Sometimes God's redirection in a moment actually ends up protection in a moment. My, uh, my wife, this is pretty fresh, I, I, I checked again last night about 10 o'clock, like are you okay with me telling this story because this just happened and she's like, I'm okay if somebody learns from my foolishness. <laughs> so she was like, I was a little stubborn, we have four kids, she's super busy. And then last week, we were like, life is already a little chaotic with four kids. I describe it a little bit like every once in a while you feel like you're drowning and then it says someone handed you a life preserver, they handed me a puppy. And so we added, a, we added a puppy last week, and so life is busy, like all, all the, so my wife knows the technique, some of y'all are like, you're gonna know exactly what happened when I start to talk about it. She knows the technique of removing a pit from an avocado. Are y'all awake? Are we, if you're watching online right now, this is not a room full of mannequins, they're people, they just, 
are refusing to laugh right now. How many of y'all know the avocados? Okay, so she was in a rush, wanted to get the kids an avocado, and she, instead of doing the right angle of getting the pit out, she put a knife where the pit was, flipped the pit out, the pit flipped out, and she stuck the knife almost completely through her hand. It's bad. She said, but here's the thing. She said, in the moment, I definitely wished I had a do-over, but I didn't scrap avocados for the rest of my life. She's like, I didn't throw out that knife. I was like, well, that's my knife. Don't you throw that knife out. That's for my steak knife. But she said, I, I wanted to learn how to do that better. I, I didn't want to just keep repeating that cycle. I've talked to people, and they're like, oh, I do that all the time. I've cut my hands up all the time. I can't be a hand model anymore because I'm always because of avocados. I'm like, do better. Like, figure this out. <laughs> Amazon has, like, you grab and just twist it. It's done. But she said, I wanted, to, I wanted to rush it. And I feel like a lot of times in our lives, we do that. We get to a point where we stumble and we fall and we feel like that failure is final. The truth is God's saying, get up, do better. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, do better. Come on, do better. I, this year, was thinking about um, growing, getting stronger, getting healthier. And don't, don't get it twisted. Some of y'all are like, you don't look like you've been working out. I, I'm not lifting, but y'all, I have been cutting calories. I mean, I know my angles now. I, guys, it's no big deal. It's, guys, it's no problem. I mean, I'm down 25 pounds. It's like, I'm, guys, stop it. All right, anyways. Pastor Jeremy said last week that God is not looking for perfect. He's just looking for progress. That messes with a lot of people. God's not looking for per perfect. He's looking for purposed. So there's a growth that has to happen. There is a progress that has to happen. You don't just end up drifting a certain direction. You prioritize yourself there. If you work out, if you lift, if you consider yourself a bodybuilder, there's a pattern of discipline. If you work out daily, there's a pattern of discipline that you put into place to get stronger. All of us are equipped with muscle. Some are like, oh, I don't know, I was born without muscle mass. No, you just like Ben and Jerry's. All right. <laughs> I've been there. Chunky Monkey is the Lord's will. It's chocolate, banana, and walnuts. It's every manna. There's manna in there. Everything Jesus loves is in there. It says just like, you can eat a little bit. I'm like, why would I eat a little bit when I can eat the whole pint? I don't understand. It's one serving. No, but you have to discipline yourself to get stronger. Here's the truth. You can't microwave maturity. You can't microwave spiritual maturity. So in order to grow in the middle of the do-over, in order to pick yourself back up and say, God, I want to get better, you have to prioritize and discipline patterns in your life to get better spiritually so that when you mess up, you say, I'm going to turn and go the other way. I'm going to turn and get better because a lot of times we find ourselves in a figure eight cycle. I'm guilty of this. Like a figure eight cycle, like for two or three years, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. Like, hey man, God is good. Everything's great. How did I get back here again? How many of y'all have ever found yourself in the figure eight cycle? It's the pattern of humanity. I'm here, okay, I need a do-over. Okay, I'm doing really good now. Everything's great, thank God. I, I've worked past, how am I back here again? And it's this constant figure eight cycle that we will get trapped in, and for some, years go by. You're still dealing with the same pattern. Do-over, pick yourself up, don't get better. Do-over, pick yourself back up. Do-over, instead of saying, God, I wanna break past this cycle, I wanna help you Get stronger. The Bible says in Matthew chapter six, verse thirty-three. This is one way that we can get grow. We can grow and get stronger spiritually. This is a verse that all of you know. We quote it all the time. It says, "But seek first. Seek first. Another translation says, "Above all else, the kingdom of God. That's His presence and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you." Again, this comes with daily discipline. You want to break the figure eight cycle in your life? Get in His presence. We have one week left during our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Some of y'all, amen, clap, that's awesome. It's been amazing. I'm telling you, breakthrough and supernatural miracles break out whenever you position yourself in a posture of expectation. Some of y'all are literally just not making eye contact with it. You're like, 21 days of prayer, I'm not even gonna look. All right, so we're, let's just get to February. I just don't maybe look. No, we got one week left. You still have time to lean in to the presence of God and finish strong. You have to prioritize yourself there. It's not too late. We say this all the time. Prayer has to be your first priority. Week one, Pastor Jeremy talked about different ways to pray. 
talked about how people pray different ways, and I think sometimes people are afraid to pray publicly because they're like, I'm just not eloquent in my speech. I don't even know what to say, and they get nervous and say a lot of things. I was uh, preaching at a church uh, on the West Coast, and uh, this, they were like, hey, we want to go out to eat afterwards. We're just going to invite a couple of people. I said, no problem, and it was 15 deep. They traveled like the Wu-Tang Clan. There was a bunch of people there. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, are we even gonna get a seat? And they stood around and talked forever. I'm like, this is great. Can we, I gotta preach five times tomorrow. Can we just sit and eat? And so we sat down and, and we ordered chips and queso. Come on, somebody, it's a blessing. And then, and then I'm noticing that everybody's just chatting. Like, let me tell you the greatest Bible story I've ever heard. I'm like, what? The chips are getting like stale. The cheese is, is like not even edible anymore because there's yellow six and, and super glue, all kinds of stuff in there we shouldn't eat. But it's getting hard. Like, can we pray? And so finally, I'm like, hey, if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and say a prayer. And this girl leans over, and she had just been recently saved. She had just recently committed her life to Jesus. And she was like, Pastor Daniel? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she was like, do you mind if I pray? And I was like, as long as you make it fast. <laughs> you seem super eager. Like, you, I could tell she was super passionate. About it. And she was like, I wanna pray. Guys, you know my journey. And I'm like, oh, no, she's... This is going super, she's going super deep into the Holy of Holies, like right, she's like, you guys know my journey, and they were like, can we do, and one girl started tearing up, I'm like, I love all of this and all of you, but the queso is right there, <laughs> full of transparency, I was like, it's just right there, like, and so she was like, I would like to pray, now I know all, the, they're all my friends now, she jokes about this now, but she was like, okay, everybody, and when you're at a table, and you're just, it's supposed to be like, God, I thank you, Lord, for the food. Take sickness far from the midst of us. Bless the hands that provided it. Don't let anybody have sneezed in it. I rebuke Rona and all of the other viruses. No, no, she was like, she folded her hands all, like this, and I was like, we're gonna be here. This is gonna be like an old Assembly of God camp meeting service. I just felt it. And this is, this is the true story. This is what she said. She said, Sky Daddy. And I was like, She said, look at all of this food. Look at all of these friends. You know Jessica's story? And I was like, no, oh God. So I, full disclosure, I was sneaking chips and cheese. I'll be honest. She started praying over every person at the table. She's like, Lord, Pastor Daniel. I'm like, when he prophesied tomorrow, I'm like, keep going, keep going. But I, I think four or five people got saved. <laughs> Sky Daddy, you don't have to pray eloquently. Listen, the only way to fail in prayer is to not show up. You have to, it doesn't matter if you pray perfectly or not, but don't say Sky Daddy. Let me help you with that. <laughs> delete, delete that from your vocabulary. Sorry, guys. The real pastor will be at, back next week. We do something here at Hope City called the first 15. If you want to grow in the middle of the do over, first 15, first five minutes in worship every day. First five minutes in the word, five minutes in prayer. Again, the cool thing about this is you create a pattern of discipline to grow, like someone working out every day, but that 15 minutes turns into 30. That 15 minutes, you get so hungry that you're like, man, 15, 30 minutes isn't enough. I wanna get up and spend even more time with the Lord. I wake up early before my iPad and my iPhone, before texts start dinging and ringing and pinging, before everything starts happening. My kids wake up, the dog's barking just recently, the yipping. Like, I like to get up early in the morning and spend time in the presence of God. 15 minutes isn't enough. Out of the overflow of my life, that's how I husband, that's how I am a good dad, that's how I lead. It's out of the overflow. But start somewhere. Look at the person next to you and say, start somewhere. Come on. Because this isn't about religion. This isn't about rights and wrongs and do's and don'ts. Here at Hope City, we talk about this being about relationship. You wanna grow in the middle of the do-over? Lean into the presence of God with a good, good father who's never ran out on you, who spoke everything else into existence except you. He shaped and molded you in his image. And I love Hope City because we're a church that looks like heaven, multi-generational, multicultural. Come on, somebody. So growing in the middle, I, some of these, Pastor Jeremy last week, he talked about growing up in scary church, where like, how many of y'all grew up in church where like you thought God was mad at you all the time? Like, so y'all, some of you know my testimony, I don't have time to go into all of it today, but my dad, uh, when he was delivered from alcoholism and he was delivered from addiction and drug abuse and he was delivered from cheating on my mom and our whole story changed, man, healing began to happen in our family and it was a complete and total 180, it was a complete and total transformation. And then we found this church that was on fire. I mean, like, ah, mm, mm, mm. I mean, like, 
run around the room, people falling out, hitting their heads on the pews, and I'm like, that had to be God, because if she's knocked out or she fell out in the whole presence of God, like the glory of the Lord hit her. So my dad, we were driving 90 minutes one way, because they used to have a saying in the 80s and 90s that a church alive is worth the drive. And so like, we would drive 90 minutes, and my dad would be like, are y'all fired up? And we were like, yeah, we're fired up. And so... <laughs> This one particular Sunday, and it was a great church, amazing church, like has reached thousands of people, but the pastor had just, I don't know, something had shifted in him, and he was like, I felt God on this moment right now. If your kids have G.I. Joe dolls, superheroes, toys that are violent, the devil lives inside of them. And my brother and I were like, oh no. So we had a premium collection, helicopters and aircraft carriers, all of that stuff. And he, my dad, we were like, well, dad's not going to buy it. My dad's like, hey, man. I'm like, no, we're in trouble. <laughs> so afterwards, he's like, I want everybody. If you've got those type of devil toys in your house, you go throw them out today. And my brother, I looked at my brother. I was like, we need a plan. Like, we need a plan right away. So we got home, and I started deflecting. I was like, hey, dad, you should come in here and hang out with me. He's like, we've got work to do. I was like, we do in the backyard. We've got mowing to do and things to do. My brother went to the room. He's trying to hide things. And my dad walked in with a huge black yard bag. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He walks in and he was like, we're about to clean house. And in real time, true story, my brother jumps up with a sponge and cleaner. He's like, I got the bathrooms. I'm like, that was amazing. <laughs> How did you think about that? My dad's like, no, we're going to pick up all these toys that the devil lives in. I'm like, okay, e okay, even the Superman. Okay, all of it. And then we packed it all up. Now again, it, my, my dad to this day, my parents are watching. I love you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So we get in the car and we drive 45 minutes away because we don't want the, we're not going to let these spirits, they obviously can't travel very far. 45 minutes, to plant that seed, devil get behind me. Like we're, so we pull up to this bridge, real talk. We pull, pull up to this bridge and my dad goes, grab the bags. My brother and I are like, okay. And we walk up to this bridge with a little, like a little river and he's like, throw it over. And I'm like, isn't that littering? Like, I'm confused. And we throw it over, and today we laugh. Inside, I'm still crying, and my dad knows that that aircraft carrier that he broke in half is worth $3,000 on eBay today. <sighs> I breathe about it. But here's, the, here's what happened. My dad, even in his restoration and the redemption that happened, he had a skewed view of the way God looked at him. He still thought God was this angry, angry dad that just constantly wanted to punish him instead of recognizing that he was a good, good father with more than enough grace. Come on, somebody. More than enough forgiveness. More than enough restoration and redemption to heal you every single time. My dad was completely and totally set free. And I remember there was this posture that changed in him where he recognized it wasn't about religion, but it was about sonship. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And I read that, that we may receive that mercy and that grace. Close your eyes for a minute. I, need, I feel like somebody needs to hear this. Here, Katie, online, God is not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. No matter how messy or messed up you've been, no matter how broken or how many this do-overs you've needed and how much grace you've needed, I'm telling you, he's the God of second and multiple chances. I'm grateful for a God who continues to specialize in the do-over. Can somebody say amen? Come on. Amen. Here's the other thing. When we're stuck in this pattern, almost this figure eight, sometimes, if we're not careful, a lot of times we'll live leery of trying again. Pastor Jeremy said week one, we think that that single failure is a final failure. Talked about a moment ago, the figure eight cycle, and one of the ways to grow through the figure eight cycle and break the figure eight cycle, we have a saying here at Hope City that we truly believe that life moves at the speed of relationships. If you wanna grow and break the figure eight cycle, you need community and you need relationships. One of the most, come on, you can clap. One of the most dangerous things during COVID was isolation. It was Zoom meetings and just trying to constantly talk through Technology, and I know we're, a lot of us are still in the middle of it, but I'm grateful for the audacious faith of our leaders and our pastors to say, let's go ahead and open the doors, wear a mask, social distance, but show up because we're better together. There's a saying that says, if you want to go somewhere fast, then go alone. If you want to go somewhere far, go together. When you have relationships and you have community, they can keep you accountable. They can recognize blind spots in your life. They can say, hey, I noticed that you're back in the figure eight of debt again. 
Let me introduce you to Dave Ramsey's. Let me help you break through that. I've noticed that you're starting to get insecure again. Let me help you break that, that pattern in your life. So this is a little plug. February 7th, so two weeks or three weeks from now, say February 7th. Come on, February 7th, we're kicking back off our next semester of Connect Groups. How many of y'all are fired up for that? If you've not been a part of a Connect Group, you need to jump in. I'm telling you, one way to break the figure eight cycle is you have to get to a place where you recognize that you have to have community. Come on, say break the figure eight. That sounds like a 90s hip hop song. Like, boom, 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 boom. Break that figure eight. Okay, I'm not gonna do that next service. That was terrible. Something else we need to be aware of and attentive to, besides the figure eight, besides getting caught in the rut of just constantly asking for forgiveness and then starting again and asking forgiveness and starting again, we also have to be careful to not get in the trap called the comfort zone. A comfort zone is just what it sounds like. It's comfortable. A comfort zone is super comfortable, but nothing ever grows there. Pastor Stephen Furtick was talking about how he likes going to the same restaurants. How many of y'all are creatures of habit? Like, you like going to the same restaurants? He said, it's comfortable. I like going to the same restaurants. It's comfortable. They say, do you, do you need a menu? I said, I don't. I know what I like. I know what I want. It's super comfortable. And uh, my family is like that. My parents will go to the same restaurant so much, so many days in a row, that the people that work there assume they're the owners. And you don't know my mom, Barbara. Like, she gets super comfortable. Like, she's like, the waiter wasn't fast enough with the coffee. I've watched her walk in the back of a kitchen before and them say nothing to her because they think that she's the partner or the owner. And she'll walk out with a pot of coffee filling other people as she walks by. <laughs> Y'all, that's comfortable. But here's the truth. If we're not careful, we were talking about the figure eight. If we're not careful, we'll get caught in this pattern that's comfortable We'll mess up and be like, ah, big deal. I can just repent and get a do-over. Ah, no big deal. I can just repent again and get a do-over. And this is what ends up happening. We end up getting comfortable with chains. We end up getting comfortable wearing those chains and acting like it's part of our personality, acting like it's part of who we are. When God never asks you to hold on to this brokenness and this craziness, he wants you to surrender it, turn away from it, grow in the middle of it, get better in the middle of it, and not get comfortable. Come on, say out loud really bold. Say, I'm not comfortable. Come on. <laughs> it's the only time in my life that I don't want to be comfortable. I don't want to get stuck in the comfort zone. Because again, it will rob you of your greatest years and rob you of your potential. Um, Paul was a man who broke outside of what was comfortable. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, verse 14, this is the message translation. He said, I'm not saying that I have it all together, that I've made it but I'm well on my way, and I'm reaching out for Christ who has wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God beckoned us onward to Jesus. I'm off and I'm running, and I'm not turning back. I'm telling you, you can step out of the comfort zone. You can break the figure eight cycle by continuing to move forward and continue to get better. Again, say I'm getting better. Come on, say it out loud. I'm getting better. Because there was a season in my life, and I've said this before, but there was a season in my life where I treated the presence of God. I'd have these worship moments, and we'd sing, great is your faithfulness to me. And I would just sing it, and I treated his presence like a painkiller. I'd get a do-over, almost like an ibuprofen to a headache, but I never really realized that he wanted to heal my entire life. He didn't want me to stu stay stuck in that figure eight cycle or that comfort zone. He wanted me to reach my full potential because there is an assignment and call on every one of our lives. And if we get stuck in 87 Honda in a ditch, it's difficult to get up out of that thing. Sometimes you get stuck there, and I said this earlier, for years and years and years, and you look back and you have years of regret because you just didn't get out of the comfort zone. We have to stay focused I'm gonna give you three ways to focus on growing in the do-over. Take down notes, come on, write this down. Remember, there is new strength. There is new strength. Isaiah 40, verse 31, my favorite verses, was an anthem during 2020. I brought it into 21. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him will gain, watch this, new strength. Not refurbished or recycled, not strength from yesterday, not strength you have to borrow from tomorrow. Brand new strength. You want to grow in the middle of the do-over? Tap into this new strength. 
And then it goes on and says, and renew their power. Lift up their wings, close to God like eagles, rising towards the sun. They will run, not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. When you walk in a position of repentance and true surrender, and you receive that new strength, and you stay focused on growing and getting better, I'm telling this redemption, it also wipes your slate clean. How many of y'all love it in the midst of that grace moment, in the midst of that mercy-filled moment, in the midst of the do-over, you feel like God just wiped your slate clean? How many of y'all have ever been there before? See, condemnation sets in. The enemy tries to come in and say, this is all a sham. This is all a lie. God never forgave you. But the moment you repent, the moment you position yourself and say, God, I was wrong. I messed up. He forgives you. It says he throws your sins as far from the east as the west, wipes your slate clean, and he never, this is the thing that blesses me, he never throws it in your face again. Three years from now, he didn't go, hey, Sarah, <laughs> you remember. <laughs> oh, you remember. No, he doesn't do that. This is what the Bible says in Psalms 18, 32. The God who equipped me with strength, he also made me blameless. How many of y'all are grateful for a God who forgives you and doesn't hold your wrongs against you? The other thing I think is amazing, and I share this all the time, I tell my story all the time because I'm really, I really believe with audacious faith that I might be the only Jesus that somebody sees. I, may be the, I might look like an Old Testament Bible character with my beard, but spiritually speaking, I might be the only hope that someone sees. So another way to grow in the middle of the do-over, another way to continue to move forward, continue to walk in that new strength, is to really tell your story. I think one of the most powerful things is when we tell our story, Revelation 12, 11, literally talks about the word of your testimony. After your do-over, after you've been set free, come on, we're week three into this. How many of y'all have had your do-over? Come on, you jumped into 2021 and you're excited about where God is taking you. We said it earlier, you can't get 2020 back, but you can have a do-over. Shout from the rooftops about his faithfulness. Tell, tell everybody about how good he's been. It's so important to tell your story but I think there's this mindset. We talked about this a little bit yesterday at Freedom. There's this mindset that says, keep it quiet. Why would you want anybody to know that you walk through things? Because we all do. You may not have a story like I found a body in a Motel 6 pool. Like, that may not be your story. <laughs> you may have a story like I only watch Kirk Cameron films and only listen to Casting Crowns. That might be your story. But it doesn't matter. Your story matters because your story can help Someone else, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, you're chosen by God. Say, I'm chosen. Chosen, chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Now pause, it doesn't mean you're in full-time ministry, you don't have to have a microphone, you don't have to be on worship. Some of y'all are like, I can sing like Myra. If you're the only one that thinks you can sing, you probably can't sing like Myra. But <laughs> you don't have to be called to the big picture of ministry, but all of us are called to ministry. Marketplace ministry, full-time ministry, all of us. Whatever sphere of influence you have, wherever your lane is, wherever you are in life, your position, there are people's lives connected to it. And destinies are defined by day-to-day -day discipline, and there are people's lives that are connected because there's healing in your hands. The Word of God is on your lips, so you're chosen by God for a high calling, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do His work, to speak out for Him to tell others the night and day difference he made in you. How many of y'all are night and day from when Jesus got a hold of you? Come on. Some of y'all should lift two hands and a foot. From nothing to something. Man, that fires me up. From rejected to accepted. There is power in your story, and there's power in the do-over. There's an old hymn that says, this is my story. How many of y'all know this? This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. All the young people are like, are, did you write this? This is my song. Come on. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Come on, give God praise. It's our story. It's our song. We shout from the rooftops about it. Three ways to focus on growing in the do-over. Number one, we receive new grace. Number two, receive his great grace. We receive his new strength and we receive his great grace. God will place great grace on your life when you share your testimony of his supernatural power. Acts 4.33, the disciples were literally going around bragging and boasting, this is what Jesus did for me. And we not only watched him die, but we watched him get up from the dead three days later. They were going around bragging and boasting on everything that he had done for them and everything that he had done 
and who he was. And it says, and with great ability and power, the apostles, the disciples, were continuously testifying of the resurrection of Jesus. And great grace, say great grace. God's remarkable loving kindness and favor and goodwill rested richly upon them. I'm telling you, there's great grace in the power to overcome, the power to surrender the strongholds that's been holding you back, the courage to fight, to rise up, to be who God's called you to be, the boldness to get your joy back. Some of y'all need to get your joy back. Some of y'all, you used to walk in and people knew your laugh. They're like, oh, that's just Cheryl. <laughs> some, of, some of you haven't laughed in a while. We kickstarted 2021 and we're 17 days in and maybe you haven't gotten your joy back. There is great grace to get your joy back, to get your confidence back. And inside of this great grace is a determination to not throw in the towel, to not quit, but to recognize the one standing with you will always be stronger than the one who's been standing against you. Number one, new strength. Number two, receive his great grace. And number three, three ways to focus on growing in the do-over, walk in renewed power. Some of the definitions of the word renew is to reset, to restart, to revive, and to begin again. That sounds like a do-over to me. Again, we draw near to him, we obey him, we shape our character around his will, and then he will take care of everything else. Maybe you're watching online right now, maybe you're in the room right now, close your eyes for just a moment, and maybe you feel like, Daniel, I don't deserve a do-over. I just wish this series would be over, because the truth is, the grace that I need, the, the, the redemption that I've needed, the, the restoration I need, the truth is, you don't know my past, you don't know how messy it is. You don't know how messed up I've been. Maybe you're, maybe you're sitting here right now and maybe you're watching from somewhere else in the world or you're sitting at home or you're in your car. I've got amazing news for you. God is in the business of healing broken and what the world would call disqualified people because God does not call the qualified. Look at me real quick. I need somebody to hear this. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. He's not looking for perfect. He's looking for your heart. He just wants your yes. He just wants in the middle of the do-over for you to say, okay, God, I'm ready to make a change. I'm ready to turn and move forward and recognize that this pattern needs to be broken and I'm, I'm sick and tired of being comfortable. David in the Bible has some major issues. I, I, I said in the Bible, because if your name's David, people are looking at you like, oh, I didn't know. David in the Bible has some major issues, but David understood sonship. Because he understood sonship, God called him the only man in the Bible that God called a man after his own heart. David got a do-over. Jonah was full of disobedience. God said, I want you to go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, I'm not gonna do that. And he went the absolute opposite way, and he spent three days in the belly of a whale, and because of true repentance, God gave him a do-over. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, we know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. We all have a call. Maybe you feel disqualified. God can qualify you again. This is what, this, I got a list here of some people that were majorly disqualified that we may even consider some heroes in the faith because God uses what the world would consider disqualified. Abraham, he was too old. <laughs> Elijah was broken and suicidal. Joseph beat up and abused. Job went bankrupt and had money issues. Moses had speech problems and insecurities. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab, a prostitute. The Samaritan woman had struggles with men. Noah was a drunk. Jeremiah was too young. Jacob was a cheater. Peter denied Christ three times. Zacchaeus was money hungry. Paul persecuted Christians before becoming one. You cannot tell me that God can't fix, heal, and restore you and your family. Because in Ephesians 2.10, he says that you're his masterpiece, and he is the master of the do-over. Come on, can you stand to your feet right now all over the room for just a minute? I want you to lift your hands towards heaven, and I want you to say, today, I get my do-over, and I receive new strength. I receive great grace, and I receive renewed power. Come on, say it again. I receive new strength. I receive great grace, and I receive renewed power. Come on with your hands lifted. Nobody looking around for just a moment. God, I pray right now that your healing power would restore, heal, and deliver. As we close out our do-over series, God, I pray that redemption would break out, breakthrough would break out, miracles would break out. And God, I thank you that you call each and every one of us, Ephesians 2.10, your masterpiece. I said it a moment ago, and you're the master of the do-over. 
God, I pray that figure eight cycles would begin to break off of people's lives right now, that they wouldn't get stuck in this rut, this pattern. God, they would begin to prioritize and discipline themselves to break outside of the figure eight. And God, I right now just pray that everybody would shake off the comfort zone, that we wouldn't stay comfortable with the chains. We wouldn't stay comfortable with wearing the heaviness, but instead, God, like we mentioned back in December, let go of the heaviness and replace it with Isaiah 61, three, the garment of praise. In Jesus' name, you can put your hands down just for a moment. Every eye closed in this room at Katie, online if you're watching, if you're here and you said, Daniel, I, I need Jesus. The truth is, I need more than a do-over. I need completely and totally healed and restored, but I don't know Jesus is my savior. Maybe you're in the room or you're watching online, you're watching the rebroadcast or you're at Katie right now and you say, I've given my life to Jesus, but I fell away. I got caught up in the prodigal life. Desperately need a do-over. Today's my day. Something in my heart convinced me of the fact during this do-over series that there's more to life than the way I've been living it. With every eye closed, I'm gonna count to three. We will not embarrass you, but we're gonna be looking around. I want you to acknowledge you're talking about me. I wanna give my life to Jesus where I wanna rededicate. One, two, three, lift up your hand. I'm looking at all the hands are literally going up all over West Houston, I believe all over. Katie, if you're watching at home right now, you can type in the chat, you're talking about me, yes. I wanna commit, commit my life to Jesus right now. You can put your hands down. If everybody in the room would pray this prayer with me right now, say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me and it hasn't worked. From today on, I choose to live for you. Please forgive me all of my mistakes, every sin I need a do-over. From this point on, I'll live for you the rest of my life. I confess you now as my Father, my Savior, and my Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can we just cheer on everybody that just gave their life to Jesus?